where you're coming from and the name of your organization. Hello, everyone. I see so many uh, great organizations and I see everyone coming from all across the country, which is so great to see. Um, if you're just joining us, we're going to get started in just a second, but please feel free to um, introduce yourself within the chat. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome, everyone. I am so excited for today's webinar, Recurring Giving 101, How to Turn One-Time uh, Gifts into Monthly Supporters. My name is Lisa Galperin. I'm the Marketing and Communications Manager here at Mighty Costs. Uh, and before we get started, just a couple of housekeeping uh, things. Uh, so if you have any questions that come up uh, throughout the webinar, I'll try my best to pause and answer questions. We'll also have some dedicated time at the end, but please uh, utilize the questions tool uh, in your uh, Zoom. Um, and that way I can easily see the questions that do come in. Um, uh, additionally, um, this webinar is re recorded and it will be sent out in an email afterwards with a copy of the slide deck. So you don't need to worry about uh, if you, you know, having a copy of this, it will be sent out to you via email. And if there are any technical issues, if you can't see my screen or if you can't hear me, please feel free to also let me know in the chat or through the questions tool. Oh, went a little too far. So just a little background about Mighty Cause for those of you who are uh, maybe not as familiar with Mighty Cause. Um, Mighty Cause has been around since 2006. So we've been in the nonprofit space for a while. Uh, we are a year round all in one fundraising platform. So our goal is to create tools and features that make it easy for you guys, the nonprofit leaders, uh, to fundraise for your organizations. So that includes uh, providing tools such as uh, donation forms that you can add to your website, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, integrations, a CRM system, analytics and reporting. Um, and we'll go through some of this as well throughout the webinar. Uh, but we, we have all of those features available for you um, to utilize for your fundraising needs. All right, so to go over today's agenda, so we're going to be going over the importance of recurring donors, quick ways to boost recurring giving, starting a recur recurring giving program, how to keep sustainers engaged, and recurring giving maintenance. And then, as I mentioned, at the end, we'll have time for some questions. So the importance of recurring donors. All right, so this is a screenshot uh, from the Fundraising Effectiveness Project 2023 report. Um, and the reason there's this screenshot is because in their report, what they found was that even though one-time donors accounted for 70, about 70% 70 of donors, they actually only contributed 41 or 42% of total dollars donated. So what that means is that people who gave multiple gifts really accounted for that uh, balance. Um, so the only group, as you see here in the screenshot that they found that saw a rise in giving year over year were donors who gave 
over uh, seven or more gifts. So as you see, there is a 2% increase overall. So despite only accounting for about 16.3% of donors, um, those who gave three or more provided 40% of donations. So what that means is that recurring donors are a really key metric in nonprofit sustainability. And overall, the data shows that recurring donors also have a higher retention rate. Uh, they're easier to retain than non-recurring donors. And as well, what's even better is that they actually tend to stay more engaged with your organization um, because they are invested monthly to your organization. And part of that is it could be because we live in a world of subscription, so people are accustomed to making um, a, a monthly contribution or uh, monthly cost, but also people understand, uh, donors tend to understand that giving $10 a month is easier to maintain and can make a larger impact than maybe making just a $120 gift. So another aspect of understanding really the value of recurring donors and why it's so important for nonprofits is understanding your donor lifetime value. So each donor that comes to your nonprofit has a value that you can actually estimate with a simple calculation. So your donor lifetime value is the predicted average dollar uh, amount that a donor will give to your organization over their lifetime. Um, so this can help you make decisions on your budget, what type of strategies you wanna prioritize, um, what donor acquisition strategies, for example. Um, and it's calculated typically on average for all of your donors, but you can also do it by segment. Um, so as you here see with this calculation, um, it's your life, life average lifespan uh, times your average gift amount uh, times your total number of donations divided by your total number of donors. Um, so I've given an example right here where uh, this your average is about two years, the average length of a donor relationship with your organization, the average gift amount being uh, $100. And then your total number of donations, 200, and total number of donors, 150. So if we calculate that, that means that our average uh, donor lifetime value is $266. So what does this have to do with recurring giving? Well, um, as you saw in that uh, uh, calculation, one of the components of that calculation is frequency. And recurring donors provide a higher lifetime value than new or, or, or one-time donors, right? They um, are going to, they're giving monthly. So your frequency is increasing. But not only that, uh, recurring donors provide sustainability and a predictable revenue for nonprofits. So as you guys know, probably better than me, um, when it comes to fundraising, things can go wrong that are out of your control, whether that's uh, a fundraising campaign that you planned that just falls through or you have an event that can't happen because of the weather, um, whatever that may be, maybe that's also a, a grant that you no longer have or a corporate sponsor sponsorship that you weren't able to receive. Um, things happen and recurring uh, donors provide you that sustainable revenue that you can rely on. Um, if you can build an army of five or $10 donors, that's funding that you can really rely on. Um, and part of that also is ongoing support reduces your nonprofit's fundraising costs, right? If you know you have this revenue coming in, then maybe you can plan for a fundraising event that you want to try. Um, additionally, recurring donors are have a monthly investment in your mission, right? So they are going to be the most passionate about your organization. They understand your impact. So they also provide a really great stewardship opportunity. Um, these could be potentially your next board of directors, volunteers, they're reliable supporters and a cultivated audience that you can utilize and activate. All right, so what are some quick ways that how you can boost recurring giving? Uh, so, Mighty Cause has a recurring giving built into our platform. Um, so as you see, here's a screenshot. Uh, we have an embeddable form that organizations can add to their website. 
So uh, donors can get, have, have the option to give on a monthly basis. They can set up a recurring donation by simply just clicking a button. Um, and as well, Mighty Cause issues the tax receipts and provides donors with year-end giving statements. So when it comes tax season, if a donor needs you know, their total from the year, um, that's provided to them through Mighty Cause. Um, we also provide easy reporting and it's super easy for donors to manage. So um, as you see here in the screenshot, um, one of the tools available is the ability to default monthly giving. Um, so we'll be talking about monthly giving um, programs in a little bit. Uh, so if you are creating a monthly giving program or you really want to emphasize monthly giving, something you can do is auto enable monthly giving on your donation form. So that when donors come, that's automatically se selected for them. And as you see here, it's super transparent for them where they see, okay, I'm paying $25 a month. Um, you don't have to have this enabled, but this is an option if you want to. Um, you can have this where you can hide the option <laughs> if you want to, but obviously we're here not to hide the option, um, but you can also just have it as an option that they can um, select into. So in terms of the donor side of it, right, we want to make sure that it's easy for donors to manage. Um, and on Mighty Cause, donors can easily manage their recurring gifts right through their user profiles. Uh, so they can log in and decide to update their credit card information. They can cancel it if they want to. Um, they can update uh you know, their donation amount if they would like or change their transaction date. That's all stuff that they can manage. And we also have a support team that helps um, donors as well. So if a donor is stuck of how do I update my recurring gift, uh, we are there to provide them that support and help them do that. Um, so it's very simple and easy for donors to manage their recurring gifts on, um, on the platform. In terms for donors, or I'm sorry, in terms for nonprofits, um, so you have a dedicated recurring donation report that you can utilize to keep track of all of your recurring donors. So you can see when to expect uh, your recurring um, donations. Uh, you can see their information, get their contact information, but also keep track of, um, you know, if one is active, if one is canceled. If a recurring donation is canceled, your organization is automatically notified as well. If there's, let's say, an issue with the credit card process processing, um, so a credit card has expired, we will email the donor and we will email you. And that is also shown on the report that there is an issue with this credit card. And for the donor, it's, hey, here's an issue with your credit card processing. You want to go update this information. And as I mentioned, you'll be notified as well. Uh, so another way to quickly boost your recurring uh, giving is adding donation tiers to your donation form, wherever that is. Um, so recurring um, giving, I'm sorry, donation tiers really offer uh, the ability to emphasize the impact that you're making. Um, so you want to think about, you know, exactly, and we'll talk about this in a, in a second when it comes to recurring giving programs, right, what your goals are. Um, and clearly outlining what the impact of donation amounts are um, incentivizes and motivates donors to not only give, but maybe give even a higher amount than they were expecting, right? If I was originally thinking of going to give $5, but I see, oh, $10 supports, uh, you know, provides a backpack to a child. Oh, you know what? I actually, I, I it's just five extra dollars. I'm going to do that because I see that the impact is so much more. Um, another way that you can add um, donation tiers is by creating recognition through uh, distinct names. So you can create labels such as, you know, if you give uh, $100 a month, you are a champion for our organization or hero. And this is something that you can incorporate then in your newsletters, uh, on your website, um, however you, you know, want to recognize donors, maybe that's creating a special event for them. Um, but this is a different way that you can, again, incentivize and motivate donors uh, to give. Um, so I'm just going to pause for questions.
Uh, so on the donation widget screen, can we display different de descriptions for monthly versus one-time donations? That is a great question. At this time, um, you only can create, you only can add one um, donation description. However, um, you can have a, a different uh, donation page, if you would like, where you can add um, different descriptions as well. So that is one potential option, but for the same form, you can't switch into two different um, levels and descriptions, but that's a great question. Um, and I just see a question in the chat. Will the session be recorded and shared afterwards? Yes, it will be um, sent out via email afterwards. Okay, I don't see any questions, so I'm going to continue. All right, so this is just another example of an organization that um, utilizes donation levels and descriptions on their donation page. Um, so as you see, $10 a month, an ideal uh, monthly recurring donation, thank you. $50 a month fund a student um, to attend a wingman workshop, $100 a month train a student to be a wingman leader, $500 a month train a wingman trainer for school district. So as you see, it's um, really uh, articulating to donors what the impact of their monthly gift will be. And this can also go into your overall communication with donors, which we'll get to a little bit later. All right, so uh, another quick way of boosting your recurring giving is making a targeted ask via email. Um, so uh, for those who are kind of new to asking uh, or reaching out uh, regarding recurring giving, one um, way that you can start is by simply going to your donors who have given $120 or less and simply making the ask of giving $10 a month. Um, so this is just an example of a brief email you can send, um, whereas for just $10 a month, you could, you can provide this, etc join our monthly giving program. And then um, on Mighty Cause, you can have a direct link where you can, if you want to um, specify an amount that's pre-selected or have recurring donations pre-selected, you can actually do that. And this would be just, this is an example of a, a URL that you could utilize where that's already selected. Um, we have sample email and social media uh, templates. Um, they're available on this blog article, and this will be included in our follow-up email as well. All right. So um, the next uh, quick way of boosting your recurring giving is um, asking for uh, a recurring donation uh, um, after you've given, asking your donors um, for a recurring donation after they've given a one-time gift. Um, so you can personalize your outreach based on the amount that they give. So you donated $15 a month to our last campaign. Can we count on you to give $15 um, per month to support our work? Um, so uh, you can crunch the numbers um, to also show them the value. So for 29 cents per day, you can support, you know, X, Y, and Z, what you do um, and make it easy for them by providing a direct link of where they can make um, their donation, um, their monthly donation immediately. All right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about starting a recurring giving program. Um, just see a question coming in. Any percent to note on increase in donations with impact statements versus without impact statements? Um, I think that's a great question. I don't have any statistics in front of me right now. Um, that's something I can look into for you. Um, but in general, from what I found just anecdotally is I do think that they're a really powerful um, I think they're a really powerful tool to utilize because it's visually telling the donor what they are uh, donating for. Um, and in, in particular, I think when you look at also some data in terms of younger donors like Gen Z millennials, transparency is really important. And that is also communication you can use year round. Um, so if you can say that, right, $10 a month 
provides a backpack for student. At the end of the year, you can utilize that language for your year round giving or to continue that communication with the recurring donor. Hey, this year you provided X, Y, and Z uh, backpacks to students. Um, here's how you can further support us for our other missions. So I don't have the stats, but just anecdotally, I've seen it um, be a really powerful tool. All right, so uh, what are the benefits for uh, recurring giving programs for nonprofits? We've talked a, a bit about this, um, but just again, so it provides diversification for your funding um, and it allows you to really think beyond campaign pace giving. Um, so it keeps, it, this is another revenue stream that you can have during your off season campaigns. Um, for example, summer, is a time where a lot of uh, organizations are not as fundraising as much. Um, so having recurring donors through your summer, summer months can pr provide you that reliable um, revenue that you need. Uh, it also provides you donor engagement, right? So this is a way that you can structure uh, your donor pipeline. Um, this is a way for you to um, create outreach and track your donors um, and as well, it's an opportunity to increase engagement with your donors. Um, and lastly, it's cost effective. So it makes financial planning really easier. And we've talked a little bit about that. All right, so what are uh, the benefits of for donors in terms of recurring giving program for donors? Um, so one of the benefits is affordability. So donors can stretch their recurring giving across the year, um, lessening their, you know, acute financial impact, right? So this is a way instead of making a thousand dollar check, right, they can kind of um, space that out throughout the year. It also is predictable for donors. Um, donors can give in amounts and dates that are convenient for them and doable for them. And as I showed, that's something that they can also manage on the platform as well. And as well, it's an opportunity for recognition, right? So we talked a little about creating, um, you know, names for your donation tiers like champion or hero. Um, creating a recurring giving program, it's a way to recognize donors that really care about your mission and they're investing in your mission. Um, so giving that recognition, creating, you know, different um, benefits for potentially um, creates a positive uh, experience for them no matter why they are giving. So some steps in terms of putting together your uh, recurring giving program. So first you want to gather data. So how many recurring donors do you have currently? What's your average donation amount? Um, on Mighty Cause, you can pull that information through a donations report and we actually calculate your average donation amount automatically for you on the platform. Um, and you wanna set your goals. What What's your overall goal with recurring donors, right? Are you, is there a certain amount of recurring donors you want? Is there a certain amount of donations you want to pull in? Um, what's your metrics for success? Um, what is your audience? Uh, existing donors are going to be great people to reach out to. And we'll talk about that in a sec, um, in, in a little bit. So you want to pull together a list of who are the people that you want to start reaching out to for, you know, your first recurring giving program. Um, and you want to be really specific and intentional with your campaign in terms of your outreach and the ask that you're making. Um, and when you're asking, making that ask, you want to utilize the data that you created, right? So um, who those people are, what your overall goals are. So um, when you're putting together your recurring giving program, um, you want to define the impact that your recurring giving will make. Um, so making a monthly gift drives ongoing support for programs such as fill in the blank. Your monthly generosity helps fund fill in the blank. Um, so this is an example of um, an organization, Tubman, and uh, the list that they provided in terms of here's the impact that a monthly uh, giving will make. So safety planning with adults and children who are 
um, in danger of violence, weekly support groups so people don't feel alone, community education that helps teenagers learn how to live free of violence. Um, so this was, this is not just directly their donation tiers. This is just additional language of this is what monthly giving can help support us do. Uh, as well, when you're thinking of uh, your uh, monthly giving program, um, a really great uh, thing to consider is giving it a name. Uh, monthly giving programs can make donors feel like they're part of a community and make them feel really good about their involvement with your organization, and it can help develop like a personal connection with your organization and your mission. Um, so when you're thinking about a name, um, it should be in line with your brand. Um, it should be different than your organization name. It should be separate. Um, it should be something that appeals to your audience. So your target donors, right? What are their interests, their motivations? What do you think is going to make them feel connected to your program and its purpose? Um, and it should also highlight benefits. So I've put a couple of, of uh, just words or, or names that you can think about. So advocates, allies, ambassadors, um, champions, club. So just a couple of names to think about. Dream builders, change champions, supporter squad, community heroes, champion club forever friends if you're an animal organization. Um, so just a couple of ideas in terms of what you could possibly name. Um, so when you are looking to create your outreach for your recurring giving, um, you wanna make sure that you're segmenting or thinking about who you're specifically targeting. So there are a couple of groups of people that you really wanna consider. So one are retained donors. The donors who have been retained year over year are your lowest hanging fruit and they're gonna be your highest priority. So you want to definitely um, uh, make sure that that is on the list of people that you're reaching out to. Existing recurring donors. So if you are creating a specific uh, recurring giving program, maybe annou announcing um, a new program and encouraging them to bump up their donation based off, again, the impact that you shared. Uh, donors who've made one large annual gift. So we've talked about, you know, making uh, monthly gifts is a bit easier than making one large sum gift. Um, so you can help do the math for them if it's a large donor that you want to reach out to. And your volunteers and board members, they're already behind your cause. Um, they are going to be, you know, it's an opportunity for them to also spread the word about your recurring giving program. Um, and as well, when you do do outreach for them, recognizing the, all the work that they've done for your organization already. So in terms of outreach, uh, you want to make sure that you create a plan for each segment. So what's the actual ask that you're making for each group? Um, this might take some uh, <laughs> uh, man or woman power. So if there are staff or volunteers that can help you um, create outreach, I would say bring them in the fold. Um, you wanna create talking points or a script for outreach. Um, as I mentioned, we do have some templates available that we'll send over um, in our follow-up email. Uh, you wanna share on social media and your newsletter and as well create an email campaign. So include the impact um, that a guaranteed source of annual income for your organization, what it will have to your mission. Um, so in terms of the infrastructure for a recurring giving program, you want to make sure that you are adding your recurring giving program to your website. Donors shouldn't have to face obstacles when it comes to making a recurring gift. And actually double the donation, they found that only 14% of organizations prompt donors to make a recurring gift during the donation process. So that means that there's a lot of missed opportunity on your donation page to capture donors and their long-term support for your cause. Um, so you wanna make sure that the process is simple and straightforward. You can add it to your homepage to make it again, very obvious and not uh, easy to find. Um, or you can even create a dedicated page on your website. Um, so maybe you can go deeper into the impact a recurring giving program does or any benefits that you um, are providing. Um, 
Additionally, um, you can create a, a, a welcome packet to deliver any physical uh, reward. So if you have, you know, stickers or, or uh, buttons or pens, I feel like with all nonprofits, there's always some sort of swag that we have lying around. Um, I volunteer for a nonprofit and we have a whole bag of pens that we bring to all of our in-person events because um, we can't get rid of them. So maybe this is an opportunity to share that with recurring donors and creating um, a thank you um, note with some of that swag. Um, and also making sure that any staff or volunteers that are helping out with it um, have, know, you know where to find the information and who to reach out to. All right, so I have just a couple of examples of recurring um, giving programs um, on Mighty Cause that I think um, they have incorporated some, some of the things that we've talked about. Um, so this is the Jefferson Center for Mental Health. Um, they have a Partners in Hope monthly uh, pro giving program. So that is their name, Partners in Hope. And we talked a little bit about giving the name um, for your monthly program. Um, so Partners in Hope uh, is their community of monthly donors and they provide generosity um, in supporting the critical services that the Jefferson Center um, provides like family therapy sessions, prescription medication, suicide prevention. Uh, and here's an example of how they've kind of set up their uh, their donation levels and descriptions. So $15 a year supply of prescription medication for two clients. Uh, $25 uh, for sessions with a school-based counselor, $50 five therapy sessions for families, $100 suicide prevention training for 300 people. So super specific, again, um, really honing in on the impact. Um, and then lastly, I think one additional thing that they did, which I thought was just a really great uh, visual and again, a communication tool was they created an infographic. So as you see, this is in addition to their donation um, descriptions, but really specifying, again, the impact that a monthly gift can make. So $15 a month, a year supply of prescription for two clients, so they can stick to their medication routine without worrying about running out or how to pay. So getting very specific about that in more detail. Okay, so I'm just going to pause for a second. Um, and just look at some questions. Uh, do you have an example of how the recurring gift ask is made after a donation is made? Um, so yes, I would say, um, I, and there was another question that came in, how long between the first donation and the ask for the monthly donation? So I would say there isn't a set timeline. Um, I would say that you want to make sure that um, when when a donor makes their gift, that you a one time gift, let's say that you are first communicating. I would say the impact of that one time gift, right? Because if they understand the impact of that one time gift, then they're going to understand maybe the greater impact of giving again. So. This can be immediately in your thank you email, um, but I definitely, I would say within a month of following up with that um, donor and saying, um, you know, this is the impact you can make if you give monthly now. Um, and I don't, I don't think I've included a direct example of what an email like that looks like um, in this webinar, but um, I will see, I can't recall if I did. What are the premiums that work the best for donations? Um, I'm not sure that question, but if you could specify that. Okay. All right, so this is another organization I mentioned. I provided some of the uh, examples of the impact uh, statements that they uh, wrote for um, their organization. So this is Tubman, and this is their keep going giving circle of monthly donors. Um, so. A giving circle, if you're not fam uh, familiar, is just a group of donors that come together and they pull money for um, an organization. So this, they kind of incorporated that name into a monthly giving program. Um, and as you see here, their donation descriptions were $21, a 10 ride bus card for homeless youths, 120 rides per year, one month of personal care products for a woman in shelter, four weeks of domestic violence support group for eight survivors, 
one month of baby supplies for new parents staying in shelter. Um, and so they even got more specific and they kind of directly calculated it as well. All right, so how do you keep sustainers engaged, right? So the first challenge is getting recurring donors. The second challenge is how do you keep them? Because that is equally important, right? We don't want um, to get a recurring donor and then they lapse or they, they cancel it, you know, within a short period of time. So you want to make sure you are communicating more with your sustaining donors, not less. Um, so give them um, updates of the impact again that their organization uh that their gift is making um and this is where again those impact statements are really powerful because this is a communication opportunity right in six months you can say your donation so far has done this um in 12 months your donation so far have done this it's an easy communication tool that you can utilize in updating your recurring donors and let them know again of their continuous impact for your nonprofit. Um, you can also, if you create a giving program to give them early notice about events or exclusive pictures or updates, check in with them regu regularly as well, especially for larger recurring donors. And you can also um, ask for feedback or send surveys to hear their thoughts about your work, their, their recurring giving program or their experience as donors. Uh, so, in terms of sharing your impact, um, you wanna let donors know about the transparency about your spending. I, I feel like I've used the word impact um, a million times already in this webinar, but I really do think recurring giving does come back to sharing your impact and reinforcing the importance of um, your recurring donor support, right? So look ahead to also next year and your goals. Um, if you do create an annual report, you may wanna consider printing out some copies uh, to your recurring donors or sending out PDF copies to them so that again, they're aware of um, you know, the, the importance of their, the revenue that they're bringing into your organization. Um, you can also list them in your annual report, again, as just giving them um, recognition for their support to your organization. So expressing gratitude year round. Uh, so you want to, uh, uh, ways that you can recognize your recurring donor. So giving shout outs on your website, at events, your newsletter, et cetera, especially if you create a name for them, you can have a section on your newsletter, here are our champions. Um, you can weave gratitude for sustainers into your regular communication, as I mentioned, of your newsletters. Um, and you can use donor records to keep track of your donor preferences. So do they prefer to speak over the phone? Do they prefer to be emailed? Um, are they an in-person event? Do they come to all of your in-person events? Um, how can you properly thank them, whether that's in person, over the phone, or an email? And part of that recognition is also like building community and this goes hand in hand. So some, again, ways that you can recognize recurring donors, um, you can host an annual donor event where donors can meet your nonprofits uh, leaders and this can be virtual or on Zoom. Um, you can organize um, happy hours, a networking event, lunch and learns, um, annual town hall. Um, you can get creative in terms of the type of event that you wanna create. Um, for your recurring donors, but this is a, another way, again, of recognizing their support. Um, you can also consider creating a closed uh, Facebook or LinkedIn group um, so that, uh, again, if you want to share updates, um, especially if they have a dedicated name, if they are for recurring donors or also if you're, you know, maybe doing some uh, meetups as well, you can all post there um, and share that information. All right, uh, just a couple of questions here. Um, are there any premium gifts that perform better than others? T-shirt, tote, et cetera. Um, I don't have the stats on exactly what, uh, what performs better. I will say, again, if you are a small nonprofit and you, you know, maybe don't have the funding for it, um, I would say, uh, you know, 
maybe test out the waters of, of trying something um, where you don't necessarily have to buy merchandise up front um, and just seeing how that goes. If you do have the funding, definitely, you know, experiment and try that out and see if that really, um, uh, you know, encourages or if that's something that um, your, your organization or your donors really um, like. Um, something, uh, some donors will object if they feel like you're spending too much of their donation on a gift back to them. Yeah, I think that's a really great point. And I think, again, it goes back to like, what exactly is a good gift or recognition to provide? Um, you know, I think, again, if this is your first time trying out a recurring donation, and you have limited funding, I would utilize what you have at your disposal. And if you don't have anything at your disposal, you, you don't have to give a physical object or gift. Even writing a personal thank you note from your executive director that feels personal, right? Like that is also easily meaningful as well. Um, all right, we also... Um, Okay. Do you recommend sending thank you letters or cards after each monthly donation? I think sending a monthly letter or card uh, after each monthly gift is excessive. I don't think that you need to do that, but I think once a year, right? So at the end of the year, um, if you want to, uh, you know, send them a thank you letter or card, I think that's appropriate, but you don't have to send that after each monthly don donation. Um, all right, this is, uh, yes, yeah, someone mentioned that there are Canva templates. Yes, Canva is a really great resource for creating, you know, a thank you card and adding your logo on there, a personal thank you video. Yes, and that kind of goes to social media as well. Of, um, if you have a, a specific recurring giving campaign of creating a video afterwards, showing your impact. Um, someone says we send a monthly story to our visionaries, our monthly donors. Yeah, that's that's great. Yeah, that's a really great example of, um, again, kind of keeping them engaged um, and uh, informed about the impact that they're making. All right, so recurring giving maintenance. So uh, when it comes to recurring giving maintenance, moving sustainers down your donor pipeline. So encourage recurring donors um, at, you know, if at the end of the year, right, to bump up their support. So you can do the math and um, you know, think about what is an appropriate um, increase in their gift, right? So maybe if it's a 1% or 2% um, increase or even 5%, 10%, whatever that is. Again, that's where it goes back to like doing the steps of like calculating exactly you know, what your goals are, and what you're trying to accomplish, you can then calculate that amount. Um, but just a small increase can make a huge impact for your organization. Um, so if you frame it, hey, if you increase your gift by 2%, um, it will make this impact, etc. Um, this is also uh, an opportunity, as we mentioned, in terms of stewardship of getting them involved in other aspects of your nonprofit work. So whether that's volunteering, peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, becoming a board of directors, maybe you have um, your election for board of directors coming up, are they good candidates for your board of directors? Um, these are people that are invested and they are have an opportunity to really stay with your organization and be involved. Um, and you wanna make sure that you're keeping detailed um, donor records or notes of your recurring donors. Um, so. One thing on Mighty Coast, we have a supporter. So it's our CRM tool. Um, this is where you can keep track of all of your monthly or regular one-time donors. Um, so you will have a supporter record that you can keep track of notes. So if you want to say, you know, um, I schedule a call with this person, um, they're interested in volunteering, and then you can actually send them a direct message through our supporter portal. Um, so one thing you can do is just, um, select all of your recurring donors, create a message, and send it out through our supporters portal. Um, and as well, you want to examine the health of your program as you, you know, start implementing it. So you want to make sure you're tracking your metrics um, in terms of, you know, how many recurring donors have increased your um, average donor lifetime value. Um, you want to meet with your team 
um, in terms of looking at, uh, you know, what those results are, how successful it's been. Um, so is there a level at which donors tend to stay? Which donation level has been the most successful? Um, which is the least successful? Do we need to update that donation amount? Um, is there a specific um, description that, you know, people are really gravitating towards? Um, so those are things you want to look at as you start um, implementing your recurring giving program. All right, so we are at the end of our webinar. Um, we'll have some time for questions, but before we do that, I just want to highlight some of our resources that we have available. So we have a support center for any technical questions that you have, uh, webinars, eBooks, and our blog as well. Um, our next webinar, um, I'd love for you all to join us is your central guide to giving Tuesday, 2024. I know it's June, but giving Tuesday will creep up on all of us, um, as you guys probably know. Um, so, uh, feel free to register. You can go to, um, our webinars page on our website to register for our next webinar. It'll be Wednesday, June 26th at 3 PM. So please register and we can start talking about giving Tuesday. All right, so I'm going to leave some time for questions. And, and just to know also, yes, this uh, webinar will be recorded. It will be emailed out um, and sent out in an email. Um, so that will be available to you. Is the supporter tool also available in the free version? Um, so the supporter tool is available on our trial. Um, so if you're interested in trying it out, you can utilize um, the trial and test it out. Um, and then if you're interested in seeing if it's something that um, you may want to utilize, if it makes sense for your nonprofit, um, there will be a survey at the end of this webinar um, that you can fill out and let us know if you want to talk more with our team. Um, and we can talk through if um, you know, the supporter tool is something that will be helpful for your organization or not. Do you send emails or personal letters to ask donors to become recurring monthly donors? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. So I would say definitely, I think both, but I think if you are a, a small nonprofit with limited funding, you want to focus on emails. I do think personal letters, especially, I do think there is a trend. This is more anecdotal, so don't quote me. I do think there is a trend of, I think potentially of direct mail coming back a bit um, with like, uh, I, I think actually um, there are some really creative um, nonprofits um, in terms of what they've done with direct mail. So I don't necessarily think personal letters are, uh, are a bad move, but you also want to think about, um, you know, who your audience is, right? But I do think email is really the best way to go about if this is your first campaign. Okay, if you've already tapped into volunteers, directors, and existing donors, how do we find more? We are a tiny 100% volunteer org working at our own kitchen tables. Um, I think that's a really great question. And I think, um, yeah, as I personally, I volunteer for a nonprofit. We are completely volunteer based. Um, and this is something also we struggle with, which is great. Right, just even getting one tech donor, let alone, um, recurring donors. Right. Um, I really do think that emphasizing, um, the impact again i know i've said this a million times but really emphasizing the impact of what what you're trying to do and i think that goes back to right goal setting right um i think sometimes it is not specific enough or nonprofits don't necessarily consider what are their goals right we need five thousand dollars or we need twenty thousand dollars but what are you looking to do with that like what are your actual physical goals um at the nonprofit i volunteer for we were a, a storytelling um, organization. Um, so we had immigrants, um, we hosted events where immigrants would share their uh, their skills or their stories. Um, and, 
you know, one thing that I helped our organization do is really hone in on, we need money for these events, right? But what are we going to be spending it on, right? Let's get really specific. Okay. If we are able to get $50, we're able to provide a gift card to an um, immigrant speaker who's offered their time um, and their skills to come to one of our events, right? So really getting specific about what exactly, you know, the impact that the monthly gift will give. Um, I think also in terms of tapping into new avenues in terms of recurring giving is I think also focusing on what your mission is, or I should say what your cause is, as opposed to uh, your specific mission. I know I contradict myself, but so I think if you are, I'm just going to give an example, and an animal organization, right? Um, you are going to want to attract people who are uh, want to support animal organizations, right? So taking that idea of like being specific about the impact, right? So how can you um, focus your the impact and not as of a specific thing in terms of your specific organization, but more in terms of your cause, right? You're not helping, um, this is what we do, but if you are trying to support dogs, right, uh, in our county, um, I think thinking that way as well, if you're just looking for at least, you know, new donors, um, that's a, a good oper a good way to start thinking about um, attracting new donors. I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry, it's been a long day. <laughs> All right, awesome. So I don't see any other questions. Okay, awesome. Um, oh, wait, just one more. Can any nonprofit sign up for Giving Tuesday on your platform? Yes, uh, if you are a 501c3 uh, charitable um, organization, you can sign up for our webinar and you can also sign up for our Giving Tuesday um, event. We'll talk about that in the webinar. Um, but yes, you are more than welcome to participate. And yes, everything will be sent out in an email. Um, so uh, don't have to worry about that. All right. I'm so happy that this was helpful for some of you. Um, please let us know if there's anything else we can do. And uh, have a great rest of your day. Thanks so much. Bye.